Hello, everyone. I'm Kathleen Lobb, and I'm the executive director of the ASME Foundation. Engineering at its core is about solving important problems. It's creative, it's awe-inspiring, it's about invention and reinvention to move the world forward. And engineering is about saving lives and making every part of life better, safer, and healthier. And now a global pandemic, in addition to the critical problems that we already face like climate change and clean water and sustainable food production are shining a bright light on the pivotal role engineers play in addressing our greatest needs. And with the current economic downturn comes a heightened need for the ASME Foundation support whether that's E4C fellowships and college scholarships that are ensuring a diverse pipeline of talent um, to helping early career engineers navigate uh, a changing employment landscape to transforming our learning opportunities to 100% digital ones. Around the world, engineers are stepping up to meet these challenges and the ASME Foundation is stepping up with them. Because, en because engineers build the future and ASME and our foundation help build engineers through an arc of programs that cover every phase of their professional journeys. Our education that inspires gives more and more young people, especially those in underserved communities, an unforgettable introduction to engineering and then supports college students with scholarships and opportunities to enrich their engineering education. Our Careers That Matter connects early career engineers to the people and resources they need as they search for meaningful work. Finally, with accelerators like iShow and resources like E4C, we're enabling inventors to turn their ideas that innovate into life-changing, really life-saving innovations that are enriching lives all over the world. Underpinning all of these programs is a commitment to expanding diversity and equity across the entire engineering profession. I'd love to tell you more about these programs, but in the interest of time, let me direct you to our website that's asmefoundation.org, where you can learn more about this work and how you can support it. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce ASME past president and member of the E4C steering committee, Madiha Khat, to present our awards. Madiha. Thank you, Kathleen, and hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to honor innovators with prestigious awards for their exemplary work. Our first award reflects ASME's commitment to increasing diversity in the engineering profession, honoring women leading technology and impact. This award spotlight the women engineers and specialists committed to technology for good. To present this award, I am pleased to introduce Jackie O'Brien, Chief Executive Officers of Engineers Without Borders USA. Jackie. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely honored to be here and presenting this award. So as Medea had said, this, uh, this award recognizes women engineers and technology specialists who are committed to technology for good. The women nominees you're gonna hear about today represent those who are leading contributors to our social sector and advancing gender equality. In the description of the award, it states that one day, this award won't be its own category. And as you meet our nominees, I think you'll agree with me that they are shattering glass ceilings and bringing us closer to that reality every day. Our first nominee, I'm, I'm proud to present, Diane Gibbons. She is the founder of Trumbull Unmanned and served as CEO for the past seven years. Her company has been named both a Forbes top 25 veteran founded company and it's on the entrepreneur 100 brilliant companies list. Diane is a nationally recognized thought leader, including participating in the White House American Leadership and Emerging Technology Forum as the only female CEO. 
She is committed to STEM education for the next generation and has founded Rice Drill Camp. This is a free camp for underrepresented children. Service First, a free STEM initiative which serves military family children, especially as they are uprooted when families are called to serve and autonomy.org. This represents underrepresented youth, girls, and children of military families. Diane also is a pilot and a former skydiving instructor. She received her BS in civil engineering from the United States Air Force Academy and has an MBA and is a PhD candidate in industrial engineering and management from Oklahoma State University. Our second nominee is Nicola Dell. Dr. Dell is an assistant professor at Cornell University, where she's part of the Jacobs Tachyon Cornell Institute. She advises students in the departments of information science and computer science, and her focus is on designing, building, and e evaluating computer systems that improve the lives of underserved populations. Her research has made extensive contributions to this field to help underserved populations including work across Africa with healthcare workers and an award-winning program to help survivors of domestic violence. She is a graduate of the Facebook Fellowship and a co-founder of the Clinic to End Tech Abuse. Uh, Dr. Dell has a BS in computer science and an MS and PhD in computer science and engineering from the University of Washington. Our third nominee is Jay Shri Seth. Dr. Seth is a corporate scientist and chief science advocate at 3M Company, where she leads the technology development for sustainable products within the industrial markets. In her role as corporate scientist, she works to break down complex problems and find solutions that stick. And as the company's chief science advocate, she's focused on engaging people around the world to learn to appreciate science in their daily lives. She has been with 3M for over 25 years and in that time has received 65 patents. She has developed products uh, that have had strong sustainability impact in our daily lives. And what she's most proud of is her role as a mentor to other women in STEM. She's one of only four women ever promoted to corporate scientists and the first female engineer to attain this position. Uh, Dr. Seth has a BS in chemical engineering and an MS and a PhD in D and chemical engineering from Clarkson University. So you've heard about our three nominees. They are, these are amazing women who are contributing to the social sector and advancing gender equality. And again, one day this will not be its own category. And I think you'll agree with me that these three women represent the best of us to do this. So this is an extremely difficult decision, um, but without further ado, I am proud to select Diane Gibbons as the winner of the Women in Technology and Impact Award as an entrepreneur, founder, and CEO of this award-winning technology company. She represents women at the highest level as a thought leader. She's founded organizations which provide STEM education to underrepresented children and, and girls who will someday become our future leaders. And I'd ask everyone to join me virtually and extending our congratulations to Diane. Thank you to the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, the Impact Engineer team, and the network of experts who nominated and selected me for the Women Leading in Technology and Impact Award, alongside amazing women, which I'm humbled to be in their company. Thank you to my family, my husband, my team, friends and advisors for your ongoing and unending support. Each day, I aim to seek excellence and hopefully serve an example to the next generation workforce. A few months ago, I shared virtually to a couple thousand girls that STEM plus your passion is your superpower. And upon reflection, I think that's true for any age. On a personal level, I hope that we can use this unprecedented time to innovate towards the betterment of humanity, to enhance peace and prosperity. On a professional level, I'm excited for the ongoing work in the Global Partnership in AI, Trumbull's Environmental Sustainability Initiatives. And in the next few weeks, I look forward to being part of exciting initiatives within the US Air and Space Forces. Thank you again. Take care and Godspeed. Our next award celebrates an organization that is devoted to connecting the unconnected by building up both infrastructure or alternative solutions for bridging the digital divide. To present the Connecting the Unconnected Award, I am happy to introduce Phyllis Westerman, Senior Manager, Global Services, Knowledge Management Organization of Red Hat. Phyllis? Thank you, Madiha. 
At Red Hat, we see the value and importance of contributing to social good through our talents, our skills, and our passions. Red Hatters share their time, knowledge, and hearts with purpose and intention. And we not only connect with each other and our partner and customer ecosystem, we connect with the world through open source communities. It is my absolute pleasure to present this award in the Connecting the Unconnected category. A little bit of background in addition to what Madi has shared, around 45% of the world population today has access to the internet. That leaves almost 4 billion people unconnected. This award celebrates organizations that are devoted to connecting the unconnected. So a little bit about our 2020 nominees. The first one, Digiduka, is a virtual merchant platform and wallet for transactions throughout Africa. This help connects the merchants as well as the customers with each other. The next nomination is Diversidad Rural. This is an alternative for social innovation in rural, rural communities through the development of individual capacities and the strengthening of organizations and social groups. The last nominee is Impost which is an innovative product that allows you to enjoy postal services at home, in the office or on the go from your mobile device. And it is Kenya based. So this was a very hard decision and it was, a ma it was made alongside my colleague, Alexandra Machado. And she is the senior manager of Red Hat's global social innovation program. She couldn't be with us today because she had a little girl earlier this week. So we chose the winner based upon scale potential, social impact, and global impact. And now to talk about the winner. In a constantly changing global and more virtual economy, this startup is one that provides a local and effective e-commerce solution. This platform boasts boundless scale potential and can be reproduced easily in other countries and regions. These financial solutions offer effective ways to invigorate small businesses and the economy. Merchants securely collect and process payments and can set up an online storefront easily with its intuitive route to adoption. This venture's social impact and potential is significant as it bridges the gap to fight e-commerce giants and at the same time align with the global economy. It is with my pleasure that I present this award to Digi Duca. Congratulations. Wow, what can I say? We're very happy to receive this award. And I'd really like to thank the team at Impact Engineers, as well as Network of Judges um, that nominated us and selected us for this award. It's, it's really a win for us, but also a win for our early users who believed in our mission to bring informal retailers into the digital economy. So those first 1,000 little kiosks that joined our platform um, and learned how to use it, to give us feedback, um, that really is a win for them. Um, and we are, we are really happy to receive this award. It gives us wind in our wings uh, to continue the work we're doing um, and, and bring even more retailers into the digital economy. Following up on this success, um, we are also excited about the recent partnership with Facebook um, that we closed on the Facebook Accelerator for Commerce uh, and the new items that we'll be building around social commerce uh, to further empower um, kiosks in Africa to enter the digital economy. Thank you. Congratulations, Gigi Duca. Next up is the Award for Industry Driving Social Impact, recognizing the dedication and progressive agenda of companies committed to engineering a better future for all through industry contributions to the SDGs. To present this award, it is my pleasure to introduce Joe Speicher, Executive Director of the Autodesk Foundation. Joe? Thank you for the kind introduction and the opportunity to present the Industry Driving Social Change Award. Achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals requires support from organizations that understand and value the potential of technology-based solutions. This award celebrates the dedication and progressive agenda of companies committed to engineering a better future through their contributions to social impact. 
crises, like the ones that we've been living through in 2020, open up new avenues for change. Innovators are leveraging this unique time in history to create new ways of working and systemic change for the long term. At the Autodesk Foundation, we believe in the power of technology to transform society in positive ways. For the last six years, I've witnessed our global portfolio of over 60 organizations create and innovate to build a future that is more equitable and sustainable for everyone. I'll share a quick example of what that means to us. <clears throat> As we all know, aircraft carbon emissions are increasing and expected to triple by 2015. By, by 2050. To meet the Paris uh, Climate Agreement, we must leverage technology-based solutions. That's why we as an organization have invested in Ampere, the first company, company to demonstrate extended hybrid electric flight. This is an example of organization truly accelerating the transition to a decarbonized future. But enough about the Autodesk Foundation, we're here today to talk about the amazing nominees in the Industry Driving Social Change Award. The first nominee, is Johnson & Johnson with their Africa Innovation Challenge. This serves to drive entrepreneurship and help to advance promising healthcare solutions across the continent. The winning six businesses offer bold approaches to tackling major healthcare priorities across Africa. The second nominee is Black & Veatch. This is an employee-owned engineering and construction company with a 100-year legacy of innovations and sustainable infrastructure. Among their many accomplishments, Black & Veatch has helped to deliver the Escondida Water Supply Project, one of the most complex desalination infrastructure projects in South America. And the third and final nominee is J.P. Morgan Chase's Force for Good program. This leverages the company's talent to support nonprofits around the world with capacity building. This year alone, employees volunteered 50,000 hours with more than 100 nonprofits in need of their expertise. Each nominee was screened for specific criteria, and we were looking to answer these following questions. Firstly, can this initiative deliver impact at scale? Secondly, is the value offering unique and differentiated? Are they doing something unique in the world? And lastly, and in the spirit of ASME and Impact Engineered, does this work utilize engineering and technology to deliver impact? After reviewing the three submissions, we've identified Black and Veatch as the winner in this category. Black & Veatch has the biggest impact potential via its operations to reduce CO2 emissions and manage water resources more effectively and efficiently. Moreover, they utilize their unique value proposition by embedding impact into their operations overall. Um, finally, BNV leverages its engineering chops to deliver on impact, pre creating impact via their design builds um, now and into the future. So BV should be an inspiration to all companies who want to embed impact into their operations overall. And I think BNV can lead the transition in the engineering field that enables a sustainable and equitable future for everyone. So please join me in congratulating Black & Veatch on this well-deserved award. On behalf of all of us at Black & Veatch, I would like to thank the ASME and Engineering for Change for this recognition. We take our responsibility to operate sustainably seriously. Earlier this year, our CEO signed a series of pledges that support the UN SDGs, and last month we announced a series of commitments. As an infrastructure company, we also know we have a responsibility and feel privileged to contribute to sustainable development as part of our daily work. Today, more than ever, we have an opportunity to truly drive social impact and change. Innovating with our clients and business partners, along with advances in technology, advanced water treatment, hydrogen, vehicle electrification, carbon capture, and energy storage, we are actively helping the world achieve many of the SDGs. This includes helping to secure our water future, working to support affordable and clean energy, and making cities and communities more sustainable. It's our mission building a world of difference through innovation in sustainable infrastructure. We thank Mike Meekin for nominating us, and we thank the ASME and Engineering for Change. We are truly honored to accept this award. Thank you. Congratulations, Black & Veatch Corporation. Our experience with iShow has given us a profound appreciation for challenges associated with hardware-led social innovation. Our fourth honor is the Hardware Trailblazer Award, and here to present it is Sean Stewart, Chief Executive Officer of New Lab.
Sean? Thank you so much for the introduction and thank you for uh, including us in these exciting uh, conferences of the last two days. And we're excited to be part of this uh, important award. New Lab is a community in the Brooklyn Navy Yard uh, residing in a 90,000 square foot building where 900 entrepreneurs, technologists and researchers come every day to build new technologies and products in the hardware field. So as you can imagine, that made us incredibly excited to participate in the Hardware Trailblazer Award. Not only do we understand why hardware is hard, but we have seen the significant outcomes and positive impact it can have when done right. But it remains one of the more challenging aspects of being an entrepreneur and innovating. And so we're extremely impressed by the four nominees we're gonna talk about today. We formed a panel at New Lab across each different technology area relevant, including strategy and operations, team and potential impact, and looked at how they were utilizing advanced technology for good. The beauty of these four nominees were all of them are doing incredibly impactful work in very positive areas, as you'll hear. It started with Rise Products, a food tech startup that's using some incredibly impressive patent pending technology and processes to convert organic byproducts into food grade ingredients. As the world continues to struggle with feeding a growing population, this was one of the many impressive growing numbers in the food tech space looking at new paths to sustainable food production. But that wasn't the only company we reviewed in the food space. There was New Leaf Dynamics who are providing various technological solutions in the post-harvest management world and essentially creating better linkages between the production and farmers and the end sources of how those products are used. As you can imagine, a very important uh, and relevant improvement for, for the planet overall. The other two we reviewed were more in the healthcare space, but had equal impact and positive momentum today. Neopenda, a clinical vital signs monitoring company that's built hardware designed to help and provide high quality care to neonatal patients. And then Wekaver, where, handheld, where they've designed a handheld diagnostic device that helps mothers or pregnant women monitor the state of their unborn babies uh, with incredible pilots and progress to date. You can see all four of these were very difficult for our panel to assess and pick a sole winner. It was a hotly debated topic, um, but after reviewing the teams, the technologies involved, the innovation and the progress to date, we're excited to announce New Leaf Dynamics as the winner in the Hardware Trailblazer Award and thank all of the nominees for the incredible work they're doing in such difficult and challenging environments. Thank you to the Impact Engineer team and the network of experts that nominated us and selected us. We want to thank our investors, mentors, and family members for being part of our journey and help us grow to achieve this milestone. Our upcoming product line will consist of a multi-purpose commercial refrigeration units that will be powered by biomass and can be operated as a cold storage, free cooler, ripening chamber, and dryers. Recently, New Leaf and Georgia Tech University got jointly funded by US India Endowment Fund to develop a world-class green chill to be shipped to international markets in the coming time. Thank you. Congratulations, New Leaf Dynamic Technologies. Our fifth and final award is the coveted Rising Star Award, recognizing the achievements and potential of emerging leaders who are leveraging, leveraging technology to achieve social impact. The rising stars were nominated by our partners, including the Resolution Project, MIT Ideas, Guyana Trust, Siemens Titan, and the Clean Cooking Alliance. This is the Impact Engineered People's Choice Award, and the winner was chosen by IE attendees over the past two days. And here to present it is someone who is a rising star in her own right, and trust me, I know why I'm saying that when you'll hear who she is. Heather Fleming, co-founder and executive director of Change Lab. Heather? As I was saying to a room of nobody before, I am happy to be here today and to present this award. The Rising Star Award recognizes an emerging leader or an organization leveraging technology to achieve social impact. 
So this award acknowledges both achievements and potential. And while each of the finalists were nominated by an impact engineer partner organization, the winner was selected by you all, the event attendees. So this, as I said earlier, is our version of a People's Choice Award for the tech for good sector. It's our chance to recognize leadership in the field and also advocate for this sector at large. So there's five nominees for the Rising Star Award. And here they are in no particular order. First is Zaheen Razin, founder of HydroQuo, an artificial intelligent social enterprise leveraging AI and machine learning to clean and purify water in urban and rural areas of Bangladesh. Second, we have Yasmin Chin, founder and executive director of ReConnect, a civil tech platform closing the last mile disaster relief gaps and building resilience in underserved communities. Third, we have Stephen David Lange, creator of the Household Farming System, a self-watering and self-draining system igniting urban farming in Guyana. And then fourth, we have Isaac Sessi, leader of Sessi Technologies, an organization reducing post-harvest loss for farmers with its product GrainMate, a low-cost moisture meter that makes it easier to measure the moisture content in grain and animal feed before storage. And finally, our fifth nominee is Sagoon Saxena, co-founder of Coco Networks in Kenya, a company mainstreaming liquid bioethanol cooking fuel as a fast, safe, and affordable alternative to charcoal and kerosene. And your winner is HydroQuo. I'd like to first extend my heartfelt gratitude to Revolution Project for this esteemed nomination. Without their support, I could not even have thought of taking the first step. Now to ASME for recognizing Hydroco's work. This makes me truly ecstatic and provides my team and I with renewed ambition to keep working harder and go on about solving this grand challenge at an accelerated pace. Thank you so much. All right, well, congratulations to all of our award winners. Um, I think uh, the, the last acceptance speech gets also the honor of being the very shortest. Um, so, and I, I want to first and foremost remind you how important your work is in terms of achieving the 2030 agenda. We wish you the very best of luck and hope that you've been able to make fruitful connections at Impact Engineered to advance your efforts. And we are here in your corner to continue to support you. I'd also like to thank our incredible MCs, Kathleen Lobb and Madiha Kod for uh, helping us to announce our winners. And of course, our esteemed judges for their support with this award ceremony, your thoughtful deliberations with more than you, other team members, in fact, we're so grateful. And of course, we're grateful to you for supporting our work at ASME and Engineering for Change. Given the fact that our theme this year is partnerships advancing the decade of action, we're really grateful for these amazing partners who played a significant role in our work. For those of you who might not be familiar, Engineers Without Borders USA was in fact a co-founder of Engineering for Change more than 10 years ago. And Red Hat has been supporting us in engaging the ICT sector, information communication technology sector, in social innovation more broadly. I had the pleasure of presenting at their conference two years ago. The Autodesk Foundation has been supporting our growth through sponsorship and collaboration also from the very beginnings. And New Lab, we appreciate the thought leadership you've shared with us to advance hardware entrepreneurship, both locally and globally. And Heather from Change Lab now, formerly from Catapult Design, who I've known from day one at, at ASME. You've informed our strategy and co-designed many of our most important programs and we are eternally grateful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to get a little misty eyed here. I'm trying to get it together. We're thrilled to celebrate an important milestone with all of your support. This year marks the 10th year anniversary of Engineering for Change. I've had the pleasure and honor of being here from the very beginning. And I can't believe, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting authentically emotional. This is really unprecedented for someone like me who doesn't cry. Um, we are leveraging our decade of growth to achieve a decade of action. I'm gonna try not to ugly cry. With that, I'd like to share a short video in celebration of our anniversary. 
Engineering for Change turns 10 this year. The anniversary marks the midpoint between two decades of action. The action of our growth over the first decade and the action that we all must take over the coming decade in support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to meet the 2030 Agenda. In 2008, the leadership of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers posed a question. How can we use the internet to engage engineers in solving the problems of global poverty? Over the next two years, answers to that question seated Engineering for Change. E4C launched in 2010 with the promise of gathering the world's engineers together with global development practitioners across the sectoral spectrum. Our promise was threefold. First, we sought to connect volunteer engineers with the people who could use their skills to improve lives in underserved communities. Second, we believed we could suppress the increase of wasted investment and technological failures we saw in global development. Our goal was to inform and guide the engineers, funders, and everyone involved in the process of design and deployment of technology-based solutions. Third, we strove to amplify the good work of organizations whose proven designs had been overlooked. In our decade of service, E4C has evolved. We responded to the needs our members expressed, shifting from solely an online space for collaboration to an online space for knowledge sharing and workforce development. Today, our reach is broader than most of us would have imagined. We have more than 40,000 members and an online community of more than 1 million followers. Our roster of multidisciplinary experts has swelled to nearly 1,000 contributors worldwide. We now manage a research fellowship and deliver actionable research to organizations in need of engineering insight. Our solutions library has grown to more than 1,000 essential technologies for underserved communities. We regularly host webinars and seminars with thought leaders in engineering and global development presenting their findings. And over the years, we have had the privilege of partnering with dozens of engineering societies, multinational firms, startups, non-governmental organizations, multilateral agencies, and others. With our first decade in the rearview mirror, we are looking down the 10-year road to 2030. The world has made long strides in lifting people from poverty, but work remains. Technology and the engineers that develop it play a pivotal role in reaching the sustainable development goals. Mounting pressures from climate change, overpopulation, and even support from governments, and of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, all threaten to derail their completion. With those challenges in mind, we're all at the starting line of a decade of action. <laughs> 10 years in a quick video. I got it together, everyone. I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish at E4C, including bringing together the amazing community of change agents gathered at Impact Engineer today. It's been an amazing journey with many players. None of this will be possible without the support of ASME's leadership, incredible partners, experts, sponsors, and the amazing team that I've had the privilege to lead. I wanna thank you, everybody on the Engineering Global Development staff, particularly Mariela, James, Marilyn, Rob, you really are my work family and I'm grateful for your dedication and good humor <laughs> in the most trying of times, and we've had a few of those. I want to also thank our extended team at ASME's Programs and Philanthropy Group, who all showed up in true force to make Impact Engineered a reality today. And I want to also put a big thank you out to the ASME Foundation, who have been working tirelessly to support our work through fundraising. And I want to thank all of you for joining us on this journey, for continuing to contribute to the decade of action, for being here today, for some of you quite late into Friday night. I now cede you your rest of your evening, your day, wherever you may be. Please do grab a, a beverage of an adult variety and enjoy the rest of your day. The work begins again on Monday. Thank you everyone and God bless.